Question 23. Asnot International Airlines LLC has recently deployed replication of mission critical services with an RPO of one hour from the production site A in Kolding, Denmark to their disaster recovery site P in Copenhagen, Denmark. The incremental job runs are having issues finishing within the target RPO. The beam deployment is currently a single all-in-one physical server placed in production site A. How should the issue be remediated? Now, since it says it's a all-in-one server, I'm going to make an assumption here that this is a vSphere environment because um, I would say by definition, if it's a Hyper-V environment, for example, then it can't be all-in-one because the proxy, for example, would be running already on the Hyper-V host, so it wouldn't really make sense to say it was an all-in-one physical server, but um, let's go through this here. So there's a few options here that we can take a look at here. Uh, configure a backup copy job from production site A to disaster recovery site P with extreme compression, then use the backup copy job as the source for replica seeding. Oh, okay, so this assumes that we will then produce backups first in site A and then make a backup copy and then uh, use that uh, as a source. Uh, for replica seeding. Well, first of all, replica seeding only works when the job runs the first time, not the later run. So I would still have to move the data uh, across and um, the, the, the volume of data would not necessarily change because uh, after using seeding, it would uh, pull from production regardless. So this uh, option here makes no uh, sense. Configure a backup copy job from production side A to disaster recovery side P with extreme compression, then use the backup copy job as the source for your replica from backup. So here we are sort of looking at something very similar to the previous answer here. And now we want it to basically always read from the backup copy job. So, okay, so this is definitely an, an option. So the reason why this should be better then is because the data going from side A to P would be with extreme compression and uh, the logic should then be that because we have less data going across that this would somehow be helpful. But the issue uh, once again is we first have to produce the backup and then uh, I would have to uncompress it and recompress it uh, with uh, like extreme compression plus uh, up here it, it doesn't really mention anything about any backups. So potentially we don't even have any backups today. Then it talks about a backup proxy server in disaster production site A. Okay, so a backup proxy in, in, in site A. This does not really make too much sense, right? Because we already have a proxy server in site A. This is where the uh, current all-in-one physical server is. So this, this, this would make sense if we have some suggestion that this is the bottleneck. Reconfigure the replication job to place replica metadata in disaster recovery site P for increased performance. So, okay, this could maybe make sense here, but um, we have to remember how, how is it that replica metadata is actually used. As so metadata is used as a sort of change block tracking. And if I have to go and talk to production from this server in site A, and then compare that with metadata that's now in site P, this is just going to slow it down even further as in compared to having it, well, exactly on the same server. So this would actually be more of a bottleneck, not the recommendation. The recommendation is that replica metadata should always be as close to the source as possible. And then we have deploy a backup proxy in disaster recovery site P. And so the real benefit here is that when we have this um, in site P, we could, for example, compress the data between the all-in-one physical server and this backup proxy uh, we have inside P and then uh, write it down on the uh, other side here. So let's go and take a quick look at the user guide here. So Veeam, user guide, application, vSphere. And let's see if we can find the uh, component here. We could even see here, let's see. Um, That's not for backup, that's for backup, that's for backup. Okay, no, 
no problem here. So if we try and go down and take a peek at this, this is inside the backup jobs. We we want to go down to replication. And let's see here about replication. How does it work? Some architecture here. Okay, let's take a quick peek and see what it says down here. So we, we have a big chart. Okay, so if we go up here and take a look and see uh, <laughs> what do we see? So there's some data here. It starts to read that out. So now it's talking about the back repository where the metadata is, and it uses this to figure out what's changed. That's all good. And then it says the target data mover decompresses data and writes it down. So the problem here is in the previous setup with the all-in-one, we had the host over here and then on side A, and then we had the all-in-one. So it would have to basically pull the data out and then send it across the van connection or the internal connection they have to the other side. If we um, use compression, which is similar to the reasoning behind these down here, then we can definitely push more across the link. It doesn't specifically call out what the bandwidth is. We just know that it's having some issues. And uh, by deploying that, we can get the full benefit of actually compression. And uh, potentially we could even uh, take a peek here uh, if we go inside to see. So if we say um, some setups here, let's take a quick peek inside. So what kind of options do we, we have? Here's that seeding that we I uh, saw in, in one of them, yeah, but uh, don't forget this is only for the first run, as I already mentioned, so that would definitely not be helpful at all. And uh, what other settings do we have here that we could mess with? So let's see, we have some traffic settings. So here we could also go and adjust the uh, compression rates. So we, we don't have to use the backup copy jobs if we wanted to increase. So for now, having the backup proxy in so IP would be the biggest benefit, and if that's not enough, we could also go and increase the compression rate.